All right, let's look at example 404. Now, I've ominously called this the ugly example because the, the answers are uh, kind of ugly. But let's, uh, let's look at it. Uh, the first thing I would do on a problem like this is I would try to factor it. So if this thing would factor, this would have to split into 5 sine x times sine x. And the 1 would have to split into 1 times 1. Now when we multiply the outside and inside, that's going to give us 5 sine x and sine x. And if you add or subtract those together, you'll get 4 sine x or 6 sine x. You can't get 2 out of it. So this thing won't factor. So what that means is we've got to use a quadratic formula. Alright, so what we get here is sine x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Now if you work that out, it's minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 10. And square root of 24, we can break that into square root of 4 times square root of 6. Square root of 4 is 2, so you get 2 root 6 over 10. And let's, uh, let's cancel the 2 out of there. So we wind up with sine x equals negative 1 plus or minus square root of 6 over 5. So this gives us um, two solutions, or two values for sine x. gives us sine x equals minus 1 plus root 6 over 5 and it gives us sine x is minus 1 minus root 6 over 5. So how many solutions do we get to the original equation? Well it depends. Let's think about this for a second. Suppose we suppose this number right here wound up being Let's say it gave a sine x is equal to, uh, let's say it became 1.12, and so on. If that happens, then this is going to give us no solution, because sine is always between uh, negative 1 and 1. So I can't just look, well, I could probably think about it a little bit, but what I'm going to do is use my calculator to come up with a decimal approximation here and here, and make sure that, um, that these are between negative 1 and 1. So let's do that. All right. Negative 1 minus root 6 equals that divided by 5. This gives me negative, I'm going to go to four decimal places, negative 0.6899. And the other one, so, so this will give us two solutions. Let's see, the other one is going to be negative 1 minus square root of 6 equals that. Divide that by 5. I get negative. Wait a second. I get negative 0.6899. On the first one, I put in a minus instead of a plus. So if I've got negative 1 plus square root of 6, it gives me this. Divided by 5, I get 0.2899. All right, so we've got those two different values for sine x, and both of them are between negative 1 and 1. So it turns out both of these are going to give us uh, two solutions. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of this. I'm not going to write that down. I'm just going to get x equals inverse sine of 0.2899. And let's see, I get 16 point something. I need this in radian, so let me change to radian mode. I take the inverse sine of that, I get 0.294. Two nine four one, and 
And actually, this gives us two answers. Uh, 0.2941, that's in, uh, that's in quadrant one. But, you know, sine is positive in quadrant one, two, quadrants one and two. So this gives me an angle, 0 0.2941. It also gives me this angle back here. It's got the same reference angle. So this angle is going to be pi minus. 0.2941. So that's going to be 2.8475. So this gives me two solutions. All right. Now over here, this is going to give me x is the inverse sine of negative 0.6899. And of course, for this one, we've got negative. So that's going to be in quadrants 3 and 4. Now when I do inverse sine of 0.6899 in radian mode, so inverse sine of that gives me 0.76. I think I forgot to make it negative. Okay, I'm in radian mode, 0.6899, negative. Take the inverse sine of that. Yeah, it gives me negative 0.76. All right, now this is supposed to go in that quadrant and in this quadrant here. So let's see, this is 0.7614, that angular distance. So if I put it in here as well, this is going to be pi plus 0.7614, which is 3.9029. All right, so that's one of my solutions from here. The other one is almost this number. Um, why do I say almost? Because that number is not between 0 and 2 pi. The question up here asks us to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So what I need to do is this, I need to add 2 pi onto it. So if I take that and add 2 pi, what I get is, let's see, 0 0.7614, make it negative, add 2 times pi, gives me 5.52178. So 1 8. All right, so these four numbers here. These are my solutions. All right, let's double check these with Desmos. That's convenient. The uh, equation's already there. Why is that? Well, it's because I did this once before and messed it up, and it's still there from before. So our equation is there for uh, 5 sine squared x plus 2 sine x minus 1 from uh, 0 to 2 pi. And if we look at it, uh, we do have four solutions here. Let's see if they match up with what we got. Let's see, what were our solutions? Turn this in a little bit. We had uh, 0 0.2941. Let me move this down a little. Move this down a little bit. So this first solution is 0.294, which we got that. The next one is 2.847, we're good. Next up, 3.903, .03. and then 5.522. So we are good to go. That one was kind of ugly, and if you wanted to write this with exact answers, the exact answers would not be very, would not be very nice. There would be things like, um, to 
to write this first one with an exact answer. It would be just the inverse sine of this. And then the other one here would be the inverse sine of this plus pi. And um, so a problem like this, I think it's fine just to write them in uh, uh, de decimal form. All right, this is a pretty long section. And so this is the last video for this section. So uh, that'll do it.